Hi everyone, I'm Sam Cracky, one of the application engineers at Entopology. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create golf ball molds in Entop platform. So golf ball is pretty identifiable um, due to all of the dimples on its surface. And these dimples help to create a turbulent flow behind the ball so that as you hit the ball and it's flying through the air, uh, the drag is actually going to decrease there's going to be more turbulence and your ball is going to fly farther. And so in NTOB, we can really easily speed up the design process of creating these dimples and parametrically control this geometry so that um, we can achieve the most ideal turbulent flow. So here, just to start out with, I've created a ball representing the um, correct diameter of an actual golf ball. And then my next step here is to place points along this ball's surface. These are going to be the points that we're going to be placing the dimples. And so what we can do is then create one um, single sphere and we're going to array that sphere around onto all of these points here and then boolean subtract those away from our surface in order to get this really nice surface here with a lot of dimples and now within this workflow I've pulled out a couple different parameters I've pulled out the number of dimples we have, which is represented by the number of points along this surface. Usually we see golf balls now that are between 300 and 500 dimples, and it you know, varies among um, the different companies and different designs, but I've pulled this out so we can really easily update this number and export a bunch of different options out and maybe test these out to find the best flow for this specific design. I've also pulled out the size of the dimples as well as the depth of the dimples. That way we have a lot of control over um, how deep these dimples are as well as um, their diameter. And then we, of course, would also be able to maybe change the diameter of some of these, but not all of them if we wanted to create uh, a not so symmetric pattern along this surface. So now that we have the actual golf ball here, we want to create the mold for this golf ball. So a golf ball is made up of a foam core in the middle that is solid, and then this um, coating, the white coating, is injected, injection molded over the surface of that. And so we can create a solid mold here. This is just a mold for one single ball. And then what we can do is actually use that ball to create these conformal cooling channels. And this is a custom block that um, someone in my company has made. And this allows us to drop in any part and we're going to automatically create these conformal cooling channels around that part. So we can speed up that injection molding cooling rate time um, and increase the throughput. And so with this cooling block, as well as our mold, we can boolean subtract these away from our solid mold. And now if we take some section cuts here, let's turn this around. We can see that we have this nice golf ball mold with these cooling channels perfectly conformal to this golf ball surface. And now we can go in, you know, maybe we're creating multiple of these, with, multiple of these within um, one injection molding process and we can add in our gates and runners and um, all the extra steps necessary before this would be manufacturable, but just as a step for creating one single mold for a golf ball, uh, this is what this is looking like here. 
and this is great for the outside of the ball, but we can also take a look at the inside of the ball. You know, maybe we're 3D printing this injection molding mold here, um, but maybe we could also 3D print the internal foam core of a golf ball. And traditionally, you know, the inside of the golf balls have changed over the years. It used to be, you know, a very long time ago, feathers in the inside. And now we've moved up to different sorts of foam. Um, at one point, there was liquid in the inside as well. And basically, there's a trade-off between a rigid, solid core gives you a lot of distance and a softer core gives you better accuracy. And so having a perfect combination of the two of these um, can allow us to be both accurate and have a long shot. And so what I've done here is let me turn on my golf ball and let's take a section cut of this ball here. Now we can use within our architected materials toolkits this stochastic Voronoi lattice that we have, which is similar to a digital foam-like material. And with this foam, we have a ton of control over this lattice structure. So we can actually define that in the center of this core here, I want to have a much more dense lattice to have a really solid rigid core to provide the distance for this ball. And as we move towards the outside, we want this to have a bit more cushion for a more accurate shot. And so these are parameters that we can change really, really easily and kind of fine tune this, these parameters in order to get the best shot that we can. Hopefully go for that hole in one. So this is just one example of you know, how we can start designing golf ball molds. Um, of course, there's, you know, a lot more detail that can go into this and um, a lot more knowledge that could be applied as well. But just as kind of an initial design process here, this is a workflow that I've set up. Um, so please feel free to download this workflow. Um, it will be on our website and follow us on LinkedIn and our YouTube page as well where we have more videos just like this one for designing um, different molds as well as uh, different sorts of applications that can be used with NTOP platform. Thanks for watching.